So good afternoon. Um, all right. Okay, cool. So the focus of my presentation today is on uh, power performance uh, optimization in India. Um, I'll be spending a decent amount of time telling you about the, the very first uh, pilot project that we uh, achieved, we completed this year uh, with Continuum uh, Energy. Uh, with a, with, it was a focus on um, your misalignment correction, but as we will see, there are, um, this technology has uh, other uh, applications. So before starting, just a few words about Meteopol. So as I said earlier, uh, we have two main missions in the, in the wind industry. Uh, before construction, uh, we use um, advanced technology to work with our partners at each and every stage of their project developments to reduce uh, all the uncertainties that are under control so that we build more, we help in building more uh, bankable uh, projects with higher financial returns. Once projects are commissioned, uh, we start working on reducing losses uh, in order to uh, increase um, annual revenues uh, with a quick and strong return on investments. So achieve, to achieve these two missions, uh, so we have basically four offerings. Uh, we have developed a, a fully comprehensive uh, wind resource assessment software package. Um, we provide training and support on, on this package. We also provide bankable uh, services, uh, so energy yield assessment uh, as well as uh, due diligence, etc. Um, we work with LIDARs at both uh, pre-construction stage uh, as well as post-construction stage. Um, so pre-construction, we, we use the, the wind cube, uh, which is a wind profiler. Um, providing bankable, instant bankable measurements from 40 meter to 200 meter above the ground. So we, as I said earlier, uh, by working with this technology, we pretty much always have herbite measurements, no matter which technology we, we are we're using. Um, for the, the other LiDAR we are, we are working with is the, the wind Aris, uh, and I will be uh, telling you more about this technology. So within a, a short amount of time, uh, Meteopol is already working with uh, leading uh, companies worldwide. So we work with um, utilities uh, like GDF, Suez, EDF, EN. Uh, we work with consulting firms uh, like Dutch Windguard, uh, Decra. We also work with uh, turbine manufacturers, Suzlon, Gamesa, Lightwind. Uh, in India also, uh, we started our operations in uh, 2013. And uh, we're very proud also to, uh, to work with the uh, leading uh, Indian players like Tata, Green Infra, Continuum, etc. So before I start uh, going uh, on your misalignment corrections, I want, I want to give uh, the audience a, a, a quick overview of what is the potential we're, we're talking about. Uh, we have performed uh, simulation tables uh, with um, 11 uh, top uh, IPPs in India. The, the total sample uh, that we worked on represent basically more than 2,100 um, operating turbines uh, for a total capacity of almost 2.5 gigawatts, so uh, almost 12% of the, of the, total, the, con the country's total capacity. Uh, we did this analysis based on uh, site data. All, all data were actual data coming from sites because they were, they were of course, operating sites. So actual tariff, actual power curves, actual availability, wind distribution, etc. The only assumption that we took um, for this is that the, the average yaw error that we observed uh, over the past years in Europe and in the US is uh, at the same level that the one um, that we will have uh, that we will be able to observe now in India. Um, and this assumption that could be considered as very conservative is actually very conservative as it is confirmed by the, the pilot project we did this year. And by considering um, this option, uh, this as assumption plus all the real site data on, on the 2000 turbines, correcting your misalignments for these 11 IPPs uh, would bring a total extra annual revenue of 42.6 crores uh, Indian rupees. So that's the huge potential we're talking about. Of course, we can also split up the, the analysis um, state-wise. And as we can see, of course, there is uh, more inter more benefits of um, correcting your errors at a large scale for with, within states uh, with a high tariff and with high-rated capacity machines. So first, um, how, to, how can we improve uh, the turbine performance using LiDAR technology? Um, what are the sources 
uh, of underperformance. You have underperformance related with to uh, wind resource, flow complexity, um, for, for which pre nothing can be done pretty much after construction because sites are already uh, constructed and there is uh, no way that we will change uh, turbine location. Then you have other sources of underperformance related to blades, nacelle anemometry, as well as uh, wake effects. Uh, for which actions can be considered and using nacelle mounted uh, LiDAR technology can be helpful in this regard. So what is your misalignment? Um, your misalignment is basically uh, by definition is whenever our blades are not directly fi facing the, the real wind direction uh, because of which we have uh, a, power, a, a power loss. Uh, why we have your misalignment? Mostly because the, the turbines are controlled by nacelle sensors that sensors that are located uh, on the nacelle just next to a very huge, huge compared to their size, huge blades that are creating a lot of turbulence. Uh, so the information given by the nacelle anemometry to the turbine control system is, is pretty much uh, affected by, by the motion of, of, the, of these blades. Um, so that results in a yaw misalignment. And from the theory, the relationship between a, a yaw error and the power loss is following a cosinus cube law which is uh, already uh, verified by uh, several research institutes. So here we can see that uh, the Dutch uh, ECN Institute has already uh, confirmed the relationship between yo error and power loss. So for to, uh, now that we have uh, access to uh, LiDAR measurements, we are able to get uh, free stream um, wind and wind speed and wind direction information up to 400 meters ahead of the turbine. And that gives us access to a whole new range of information that helps us in uh, understanding, first of all, what is the amplitude of the yaw error. And so now that we know this, we can directly correct it uh, in the turbine control. So this, uh, desi this LiDAR has been basically designed for power performance optimization. It has no moving parts. So in terms of hardware, it is highly uh, reliable. It is also designed to be um, installed and uh, dismantled uh, very, very fast so that we can use the same uh, LiDAR unit to uh, optimize uh, turbine after turbine uh, entire wind farm. Um, the, the tripod also is may, it has been designed in order to ensure that we have a fast and an accurate alignment, which is very important uh, for, to get the data we need for the your error correction. So as I said, the Windaris uh, measures um, IEC compliant, uh, I, I, yeah, IEC uh, equivalent uh, data 400 meter uh, uh, ahead of the turbine. So there is al already a lot of uh, certification of the data that uh, were made. So here I ju I'm just showing one that was made by uh, DTU uh, in Denmark, where we are comparing um, mass measurement, concurrent mass measurement with uh, LiDAR uh, measurements. And we see that we have uh, IEC class one equivalent uh, measurements. So when it comes to your misalignment uh, at a large scale, uh, we need to have a technology that can be adapted to any kind of turbine that works in any kind of terrain, uh, offshore, complex, uh, flats, that doesn't require any uh, calibration, full standalone without any data processing, uh, a technology which is operational and efficient. And the wind iris has been designed um, to, to achieve uh, all these uh, features. The, the idea, as I said, is that we need, um, of course, it wouldn't make any economic sense because uh, the hardware itself is uh, an expensive device. It wouldn't make any economic sense to have a LiDAR deployed on every machine. Uh, what we need in order to get a very quick and a very strong return on investment is to be able to measure on one turbine, measure the yaw alignments, uh, the yaw misalignments, correct the yaw misalignment, and go to the next turbine and do this loop uh, as, as fast as possible. So that at the end, uh, we end up, uh, if we manage to go from, from one turbine to the other um, in the shortest possible amount of time, we see that the return on investment goes higher and higher. Um, sometimes when it comes to, this is a, a site uh, in Europe uh, for which we can see wh wh what is the, um, the effect of the terrain in terms of uh, inflow angle be between the two different uh, beams uh, and as well as uh, horizontal uh, flow deviations. So 
other performance uh, optimization applications apart from your misalignment, which uh, I would I would recommend as the number one application uh, with this technology. But of course, the way the way the equipment has been designed is that you can also because you get 400 meter um, ahead of the turbine measurements, so you are all pretty much always satisfying the IEC condition of 2.5 uh, rotor diameter distance. So you can use this to also uh, draw a power curve for monitoring. Um, nacelle anemometry calibration and wind sector management. So now, what is the what is the potential we can expect uh, from uh, your misalignment correction? So here I'm going to sh show you the track record that was observed uh, in Europe and in the U.S. Um, from 60 deployments uh, over five uh, past years. So this is a, a very important um, track record because this was uh, what we knew before starting the project with uh, Continuum and this is uh, basically how they got convinced that they have to do uh, your misalignment correction. So over um, these 60 projects uh, with data collected over various types of turbines, uh, various types of terrain, um, flat, complex as well as uh, offshore, you can, we can see that the, the, the range of your misalignment goes from 0 to 15 degrees, so up to 15 degrees, with an average of 6.2 degrees. 6.2 degrees, uh, that translates into an average AAP loss of 1.9%. So this is basically for Europe and, and the US. Um, so now, one of the, I would say, one of the main uh, objectives of the pilot project with uh, Continuum was to um, validate that in India we are also uh, facing uh, your misalignment issues to, uh, to also to quantify um, this, this value in order to, uh, to validate the, the different business cases. So we did this project with Continuum in a Surajbari wind farm in Gujarat. Uh, so Continuum Wind Energy, a few words. It's a Singapore-based uh, IPP, which was founded in 2009. And they have now 165 megawatts uh, operating uh, across the country. So as I said, the, the, the various objectives of this pilot project was to demonstrate the whole range of capabilities of the wind Aris. Uh, because it is a pilot project, we, 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 we didn't want to only uh, correct the your misalignment. We also we also wanted to quantify uh, the benefits of this your correction, which means that we did a pre-construction uh, power curve measurement as well as a post uh, post co correction uh, power curve measurement. Um, to, so to validate the use of the wind areas in the in the Indian context, uh, so so that we can also uh, verify all the business case uh, assumptions, show the uh, high profitability of this technology uh, with a complete cost benefit uh, analysis to encourage IPPs in India uh, to maximize their uh, turbine efficiency and ex extend their their project lifetime, and also to demonstrate the ability of uh, our team of Meteopol India, who is staying in who is staying in Hyderabad. Uh, to deliver uh, premium uh, services uh, to IPPs related to, uh, to the wind iris NASA mounted LiDAR technology. So what we did, as I said, uh, first, first step was to uh, define uh, on which turbine we would do this pilot project. So we do first a, a desktop study where we look at the SCADA and we identify which, which machine is the most likely to be uh, underperforming. Um, then, of course, we have a lot of uh, work pre-installation uh, requirement with the go-no-go -no -go checklist in order to make sure that when we go on site, we know exactly where to locate the, the, the equipment on top of the nacelle. Uh, we, we know exactly how, what would be the communication protocol, etc., etc. Uh, deployment of the wind iris on the first selected turbine. Um, then uh, collecting and uh, monitoring the, the data uh, remotely from the office. And then analyze and calculate the yo error uh, so this was the, this w these were the ma main steps uh, of, of this project. So first of all, uh, how did we calculate the your error? So I'll, I'll try to go fast because this is a bit uh, uh, technical. So the, the idea is that for the your misalignment uh, calculation, we don't need to get uh, turbine data. We just, we just get our wind iris uh, row data, we filter them, we, we, we keep only the valid uh, data, we, we, we average them across time and we get the, the yo error. So this is a, a, just a sample of the row data we get from the, from the wind iris. So we get basically data 
at 10 different distances from 80 meter to 440 meter. And the column um, with direction gives us directly the relationship between the nacelle, the, the real nas simultaneous uh, rela uh, relationship between nacelle orientation and uh, real wind direction, which is by definition the yaw misalignment. So when it comes to filtering, of course, we have a couple of filters regarding uh, wind speed, regarding uh, availability of the LiDAR data, uh, regarding also the root mean square error between the two beams, the extreme also yaw error. So we, we filter uh, the data so that we keep only the valid uh, yaw misalignment data. We time average them. Uh, so, and we also have a, a tool which is called IC95, which helps us in optimizing the duration of the campaign. Because as I said earlier, the faster we go, the higher will be the return on investment. So we need to, uh, to find um, a statistical way of having enough, uh, enough, certainty, sorry, enough certainty to make sure that uh, we have captured the yo misalignment information in the shortest possible uh, amount of time. So this IC95 uh, tool is designed so that at the end, uh, whenever we reach the IC95, we have 95% of chance that the yo error will be within a certain limits. So basically, we, we stop the campaign uh, when IC95 is below 0.5. And in terms of AP impact, we have already uh, controlled it so that it's only responsible, the error can be only responsible for 0.25%. So in this case, uh, after so because we, we wanted also to get the, the power curve uh, so, so that we could quantify the, adv the benefits of uh, your error correction. So in that case, for 15 days, 15 continuous days of um, your error measurements, the final um, value was minus uh, 7.55 degree. So minus tells us exactly to, wi to which direction uh, we should, uh, we should uh, or, um, correct the, the, the yaw error. And of course, the amplitude of 7.55 uh, shows that we are um, above uh, the average that we observed in US and in, the, in, in Europe. So graphically, we can also see how uh, days after days, uh, the yaw error, so days after days, we, we see how the yaw error starts converging. And we can see also here the IC95 that I mentioned. Uh, which, which, which basically tells us exactly when we can stop uh, the campaign. So after correction, uh, we, we, this time because it's a, it's a pilot project, we wanted also to keep measuring so that we could show the benefit in terms of uh, AAP increase. So we can see, first of all, that after correcting the, the yaw error, uh, the, the, the yaw error for the next 15 days uh, was directly uh, reduced uh, by, uh, significantly. So now power curve analysis. Uh, so when, when we do power curve analysis, we need to understand that there is, right now, uh, it's not IC uh, compliance but that we can use both the, the IEC guidelines as well as a procedure that was uh, established by uh, DTU in Denmark for um, per performance measurements with a two-beam nacelle LiDAR, which was exactly the, the wind iris. So these are the inputs that we required for a power curve analysis, inputs from the turbine itself, input from the wind iris, and of course, environmental uh, inputs. Synchronization, of course, is very important because we're talking about two different hardware. So we need to make sure that we have a proper synchronization. This is one of the, of the challenges that we have when we do this kind of, uh, of campaign. So for uh, power curve measurements, here we have access to both wind iris data as well as turbine data, which we filter, uh, which we normalize, and at the end we, we draw the, the power curve. So the filters uh, are the typical filters that you have in, uh, in IEC, plus some filters that are uh, related to the, to the LiDAR uh, itself. Measurement height also is a, is a challenge. Uh, apart from synchronization, another technical challenge is to be able to, to make sure that we get the right measurement height, because uh, uh, as the IEC uh, standard uh, mentions, uh, we have to make sure that our anemometer should be within 2.5% of, of hub height. So it means that we need to be very careful with the, 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 tilt, uh, the tilt angle of the, of the optical head. So this is also a, a work that we do uh, during the installation. We make sure that we are uh, measuring at 2.5D, that we have the right measurement heights. 
Um, wake occlusion also, the same, the same, the same way um, DTU has established a formula uh, with the two beam LiDAR so that we can also, uh, the same way IEC is designed, um, so that we can also exclude some wake sectors. And power normalization for air density that we do from uh, temperature uh, measurements. So eventually, uh, we managed to draw power curve before uh, your error correction as well as after your error correction. And we can see, now we can see visually that there is a, a significant increase of, of power from before construction in the blue, the blue power curve uh, before construction and the orange power curve uh, after uh, construction. So if we apply now the real site data, the real site distribution data on the, the both power curves, we can actually quantify what would be the increase of AEP uh, due to this, um, thanks to this campaign. So we can see first the average power in each uh, speed bean. So these are the steps that we need for AEP uh, calculation. And by, as I said, by applying the actual site data on both measured uh, power curve, we can, we can see what is the, exactly the, the gain in AEP. So for this uh, turbine, out for which we had 7.55 um, degree of your misalignment, we are now able to justify that the related uh, power um, AP increase is of 2.4%. So by this pilot project, we are now able to demonstrate that upstream wind measurement can provide a, an easy solution to solve wind turbine underperformance, especially the one related to your uh, misalignments. Within two weeks, in that case, we, we managed to improve the annual uh, energy production uh, of 2.4%, uh, which means that a solid return on investment can be obtained with an all-inclusive uh, uh, model. And if you remember what I said uh, as an introduction, it also justifies the huge potential that uh, IPPs now can see of having large-scale um, your misalignment correction campaigns throughout their operating assets. So now Meteopol uh, offers three, um, s three phases of uh, services. Uh, first of all, as I said earlier, what we do, we do a desktop study uh, before, uh, before starting the campaign. We define exactly what would be the deployment strategy of the wind uh, in, in order, again, to, uh, to maximize uh, return on investments. We design the, the campaign. Of course, this is, this is being discussed with the, with the client and finalized. Then uh, we provide support and training, support and training in the sense that we, we do the first uh, installation, the first dismantlement, and by doing this, we also train the ONM, the ONM uh, team, no matter if it's the, 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 or the direct ONM from the, um, uh, from the IPP or some subcontracted uh, ONM, uh, to do the, the, from the second installation uh, onward to do all the site uh, work. And then we have, um, services, engineering services of uh, monitoring uh, the your misalignment, correcting the your misalignment, doing power curve uh, before and after if, if necessary. Thanks for your attention. Right, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, may I request Mr. Dilip Nagam, uh, director